this is the Provoke Brawn, and this is the HyperX Procast. This might look like the Quadcast, but it's actually an XLR microphone from HyperX, and this is a professional-grade condenser mic with a large diaphragm capsule and some interesting stylings and, and some nice aesthetics. And there's, it's a good thing that it looks like the Quadcast, because that was a great microphone, and one worth considering if you're looking for a USB mic. But if you want to get a bit more serious with an XLR mic, then this might be an option as well. It has some nice aesthetics to it, and obviously some bonuses that you get as standard with purchasing it that includes the shock mount system that you can see here, which is removable and that's useful, and I'll talk about why later on. It also has a couple of switches that I'll talk about as well that includes a 10 decibel pad and an 80 hertz high pass filter that allow you to eliminate low end frequencies from your audio recordings, and you can see those here. But otherwise it doesn't have any other buttons on it because it's an XLR microphone, so you'll need an interface to work with it. Now out of the box, you essentially just get the microphone, and the other thing that's included is a detachable metal pop filter, so it's designed to help you eliminate your plosives and P sounds from your recordings. And this is also installable in different ways because actually you can clip it onto the shock mount system and I'll show you the process for that in a second. Mm -hmm. So you can actually reposition it and that's one of the important things about it and the nice things about the design. So you don't get much, there's no XLR cable included and obviously you're going to need an external XLR interface of some sort. And I'll show you a few different examples. I'm currently using it with the Rodecaster Pro 2 for this part of the voiceover, but later on I'll show you the other potential setups that you can use it with. And you obviously also need an XLR cable because you don't get one of those. So you're going to have to purchase some other things if you haven't got them already. But what you will notice is the shock mount has the threading on it, which is adjustable for mic stands and boom arms. And I'm going to use it with the Rode PSA 1 Plus. And the installation for that's really straightforward and easy. And I'll show you that later on. But obviously, you want to get it on a mic arm and close to you. This is a condenser microphone with a cardioid pickup pattern. So you are meant to talk into the front of it where the HyperX logo is. So as standard, you clip on the pop filter to the front there. And it does just clip into that shock mount system. You'd need to then get it close to you and talk into the front. But obviously, being a cardioid pickup pattern, it's not designed to pick up surrounding noise. So if you wanted to use it for like a podcast or interview with multiple people trying to talk into the same mic, you wouldn't be able to do that. If you are just using it for streaming, voiceovers and recordings on your own, then that should be fine. Now, I said already you'll need an XLR interface. You also need 48 volts of phantom power from that interface as well. This is the Razer Audio Mixer as an example of what you could use, obviously, also, GoXLR, for example, or Elgato's Wave XLR interface are options, and those are reasonably affordable. As I said, I'm using the Rodecaster Pro 2 at the moment for this, but I will demo what you do with these later on. But you have a simple interface set up, the microphone, boom arm, and other parts, and then you've got potentially a really good sound. As you can hear at the moment, you get a really rich sound out of it. I found that basically almost immediately when plugging it in. Very nice sounding microphone. There are some caveats to that that are worth talking about though. And that high pass filter actually came in quite handy because what I found is if I turn it off, you can hear some of the lower sounds. And I'll show you what I mean later on. But I'm not finding that I'm having to eliminate a lot of other noise with the noise gate set up on the Rodecaster. The experience may vary from device to device, so it's worth talking about those a bit later on and showing you what you can do in there. And you can see that the setup for installing it on a boom arm is really straightforward. So this is the Rode PSA 1 Plus. It has two lots of threading on the inside of this, so it should fit on most boom arms with relative ease, and it will work with mic stands as well. There's no other adapters included, but you should find just screws in, as it did then, really straightforward. Now, the other thing that I really like about this design is because, as I said, you're meant to talk into the front of the microphones. You went to talk in where that HyperX logo is. So if you've got it on a boom arm like I have, you'd have to then have that boom arm angled in such a way that you could talk into the front. But the bonus of this setup with the removable shielding from the shock mount is it's basically just really taut straps adjusted around the edges and clipped on. You can remove those, reposition them, and therefore turn the microphone in the mic stand or boom arm so it's repositioned in a way that will suit you. So now if you have your boom arm mounted off to the side, as I'm going to, you can then get to be able to talk into the front of it without any problems. 
So that shock mount is nice because it's obviously going to eliminate some of uh, the potential sounds that might get into the microphone and ruin sound, but you can also use it to adjust the positioning of it in a really easy way. So now I'm going to show you a few different things about the interfaces that you can use it with and the various settings in there, as well as the impact of surrounding noise. And here I am to demonstrate what the setup is with the microphone on a boom arm. Obviously, as I said, talk into the front of it where possible. So you can see, obviously, you could see the rear on camera and depending on the angle. And... The other thing, other things of note, so I'll note a few different things as we go through here. Obviously, I'm now blocking my face, but that, I want to do that on purpose because what I'm showing is uh, the closer you get to it, the better it sounds. Obviously, you could also take the gain down a little bit there on your interface if you need to. And the other thing is this adjustable shock mount system. So you've seen that on here, for example, you can just loosen this and now we can position it in a different way if you want to. So you could put it on sideways or up like this, whichever way you wanted to adjust it in that. So I've already shown that you can turn it in the shock mount, which is useful because you can then position it where you need to in terms of where it's going to sit from where your boom arm is because I've got my boom arm coming off from the side. You also have access then to those switches that I talked about before. So you've got the high pass filter and the pad. So the high pass filter is interesting because that's currently turned on. And what I found is if I turn it off, you can hear some of the surrounding noise. And that's pretty horrific, obviously. Not ideal. I think that is going to vary depending on the interface you're using and the noise gate settings on there and other things. But it's obviously picking up some surrounding noise. I'm surprised it's quite that bad. You've seen just how much that eliminates it. So if you do find using the microphone and you're hearing a lot of that sort of noise, then you can just adjust that. The other thing is this button here, which is a decibel, which drops 10 decibels off of it. And that essentially means that essentially means that you can use it in a, a noisier environment. So that's the idea of those hardware settings. But most of what you want to do with the microphone it will be on your xlr interface because that's where you'll be able to adjust it now you can see there's quite a few differences between this microphone and the quadcast if you've looked into that at all you'll notice for example obviously there's no mute on top there's no rgb lighting it's a lot more understated so the similarities kind of end at the pot filter and the shock mount and other things but the quality is undeniably really good so with the cardioid pickup pattern, the other benefit is going to be things like sound from behind won't be picked up quite so much. So for example, keyboard, if I'm typing behind it, you likely can't hear that very much at all. And, and just, you know, I can see that is being picked up by the microphone, but it's negligible. Whereas if you had surrounding noise then that might be an issue and that's the important point of putting it on here getting the gain down adjusting your settings and just you know you can eliminate that noise from your recordings and i don't think it's picking up a great deal of background noise you've heard already you can't really hear it so i think it's worth doing some other things i'm going to show some other interfaces but the other thing i want to do is show the Shure SM7B while I'm here because I also have that. So I'm just going to switch between them. So I'm going to switch now. And now you can hear the Shure SM7B. So this is my usual microphone. This is now muted, so you shouldn't get any interference from that. But this is the quality of that. And you can hear just the difference between them. They both sound really good. Uh, the Shure definitely is better at eliminating background noise. But if I just switch back once again, you can hear the Procast. So really good sound there too. Really rich, really clear and excellent, at least with the Rodecaster Pro 2. So now I'm going to show you setup with other things. And here I am once again, but this time with a different interface, because now I'm using the Wave XR from Elgato with the Procast. And this is a great interface, by the way, that I've done a separate video on because it's a tiny little box, as you can see, with basically just a volume control on it, and then a headphone jack, USB-C connection, and the XLR. And it also has that 48 volts of phantom power, 
so it's good enough to power it, but it's mostly plug and play. But you also have an interesting software interface through Wavelink, which gives you good streaming and routing controls for your audio. But this is actually without that software installed. This is just straight plug and play, this current recording, because I wanted to be able to demonstrate just maybe how easy this could be to set up and to show the capture quality of it. Now I've got it on a different interface. What I wanted to show is difference in the buttons and what that can make as well. It's currently set with a high pass filter on and turn it off. And I can still see that it's picking up some of the audio, but you will notice that it hasn't done what it did with the pro car with the Rodecaster Pro 2, where it suddenly just made the audio unbearable and weird. So it will vary from device to device. It's also set to naught decibels at the moment. So if I take the pad and turn that, you can see we've lost that sound. Now that's obviously useful, as I said, if you're in a noisy environment, so you want to reduce the amount of decibels the mic's picking up. So I'm in a pretty quiet environment, mostly. I have birds outside and cars passing by and stuff like that, but it's not too bad. And the mic, I don't think, is really picking that up, which speaks to the quality of it. So right, really straightforward, easy to use, and if you've got the right interface, you can make it sound fantastic. So all round, another winner from HyperX. And a great looking microphone with some great features included in it. Just keep in mind that you're going to need to buy some other things and go about that setup process. But mostly really straightforward plug and play setup with the Wave XLR, for example. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.